Welcome to the Meta One Coin Report, exploring the world of private digital currency through the eyes of human rights and empowerment of humanity. Here's the host of the Meta One Coin Report, Leanne Carroll. This is Leanne with the Meta One Coin Report. Today we have Robert P. Dunlap, the visionary and the founder of Meta One Coin Trust. So I wanted to bring you on. Hi, Robert. How are you? Hey, Leanne. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I'm so happy for you to be here. And I wanted you to explain or just talk about the scope of the project of Meta One Coin Trust, how you came about creating the vision and how it evolved. Okay, thanks, Leanne. Um, the vision uh, always came about my life experiences. Um, I, I started out um, with a technology company. I went into private uh, placement, venture capital, mergers and acquisitions, and other things. And over my experience of about 20 years of transacting in commerce, I, I kept coming over this common denominator of where the problems were with our business transactions, what was always a shortcoming or this the stifling of our true growth and time after time, the same variable came popping up, kept popping up. And after, you know, 18 years of this, I was like, you know, we need to do something better. Uh, we need to, we need to create a new system. I, I, and I wanted to just create a more efficient system. And that's how we came up with metal one coin, uh, metal one coin trust through just iterations and iterations of, business and finding the common denominator of, of stifling growth and human rights. And then that was the premise of Metal One Coin Trust. Okay. It, w- would you say regulation was probably one of your biggest obstacles? <laughs> um, you know, regulation, um, the Patriot Act, other banking considerations for just, you know, transacting in business multinationally, nationally, um, you know, it was, it was, um, yes, regulation, Patriot Act, know your client, um, various, various, uh, procedures are required by banks, um, be very stifling, very, um, I felt that I was being treated like a money launderer or a drug cartel leader, just transacting in legal free enterprise. Right. So, um, I always found it very, um, very dishonorable, very, um, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't appreciate the, the defamatory, uh, position that I had to prove to these third party banks that no, I wasn't, you know, the drug cartel leader. I'm, I'm not, I'm a money finance guy. I'm, I'm in private enterprise. Every time we had to go through this massive, massive, you know, KYC package, and I just, I thought it was very inefficient and very dishonorable. I didn't feel that I needed to be treated like a criminal on every transaction. I then started to file legal claims against these different organizations, agencies, whatever you want to call that. And through that very intimate process of legal action, you start to really understand um, the entirety of the situation. Um, how it is so connected and how it is just not as it seems. Um, and, and I just remember my, um, my um, understanding on like, let's say our first case filed or the first claim, we were so naive, right? We, I remember thinking that the judge was like there to rule on, you know, and, and be honorable on right versus wrong, you know, the scales of justice. I, thought, I used to believe that there was a constitution uh, that was protecting a citizen's rights, inalienable rights. I was very naive. Um, I, I even I even joined the military and I went to Desert Storm as a combatant, and I believed that we were protecting the Constitution. Uh, I was that naive. I mean, extremely naive. And 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 then going into these court uh, situations and seeing that the judge was always bought and sold by the bank, and the bank and the judge are one, and the bank and the judge are one with the government. A federal judge and a federal government are all one and the same. A federal judge's job was always to protect the federal government. There was no, you know, there's no scale of justice. So anyway, I was very naive, very, very naive. And that's why I understand when some people come into these situations and they're like, oh, the judge, he'll rule and let the judge rule. He's great. He's honorable. And I, I used to believe that like, you know, a long time ago. 
Um, so anyway, those are very common denominators. And, and so throughout that journey, I started to invest in, a, in, in political lobby groups. And, and that's when, you know, I really saw the light on the alleged checks and balances of this government, state or federally. I mean, we saw everything. We, I can't explain it in this, in this interview, but just the entirety of what we saw and how there was just, there was a, there's always another force driving these lawmakers and it was never based on the representative uh, Republic that I always believed that we had. So we just, every case, everything we saw, we kept seeing these major deficiencies and major um, uh, actions made by this larger power. And it wasn't always the government, it was something over the government. And the more we worked, the more cases and the more lobbying and everything, everything was just greater evidence of that something had to be changed. Um, we could not operate in business any further in this type of environment. And so um, that was, you know, I just everything was wide open. We, we pretty much I saw everything on the legal side, on the political side, and we just kept evolving, evolving to the point in which we started the, the foundation of Meta One Coin Trust. And the foundation of Meta One Coin Trust is privacy, absolute privacy, isn't it? <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, yes, absolutely. And so privacy in the legal perspective, and as some of the listeners may not know, there's separation, there's difference between public and private your public aspect or your public non-living fiction is your driver's license person. Your private side is an unincorporated legal entity in which actual humans own. So there's a lot there back and forth and it's a very, you know, I can, I can say it in a sentence, but it's a volume of information behind each sentence. But yes, it is private. Is it in a private jurisdiction um, unincorporated with a state or federal government? And that's how we can say, you know, you know, state of Texas, Florida, whatever, um, Federal government, you know, you're you're lovely. We're going to keep you over to the left. We're going to exit in our own unincorporated way, and we're going to transact in a private enterprise and private legal formations and a private financial platform in which we choose. So, yes, it is very private in the legal sense. Very good, very good. And you created Meta One and Meta One Coin Trust. And you recently had an ICO in July of this year. Yes, we uh, we're very excited about that. We um, we we had a private uh, offering uh, of Metal One Coins uh, going back a couple of years. We did a, a a pilot launch. We started the blockchain, the Metal Block. It's all a completely private blockchain, um, and uh, we started July fourth, and it's been very successful. That is fantastic. And then you did a, um, you have a, an exchange and you did a, a private or a, a pilot exchange for the initial coin holders. How is that going? It's going phenomenal. So we, we did a pilot launch, which meant we're issuing uh, coins and we're trading within our uh, distributed exchange. It's called a DEX. Um, it's called Meta Exchange. Um, so we've been operating very favorably in that situation. Uh, our volumes are very high for our, our trading. Uh, we've issued large quantities of coins of the pre-bought coins, and that that transference has gone very well. Um, actually, with zero problems at this point. So uh, we have uh, what's called gateways in which we interact with other major markets. Those gateways are operating very favorably and very efficiently and so we're very excited with our pilot and where we are today and we're very excited to you know launch the full capacity of our platform very soon so it's been a very successful pilot very good and people can trade on the platform they can trade uh any type of cryptocurrency um uh, yes absolutely uh the main markets uh we're we're trading eos light ether you know, Ripple, just the major, major, major markets, Litecoin. Um, so we're trading eight of the majors and um, we're able to um, fully trade, buy, sell, however you'd like to do it. Um, uh, so yes, we have a lot of trading going on right now. I'm okay, actually looking good. at it over my head, so. 
Um, very good. And how is the Meta One coin performing on the exchange? Mm. Um, it's performing very well. And it so it's, it's an interesting financial architecture, Meta One coin. We have eight smart contracts that instill uh, asset value, which we have gold backed reserves backing Meta One coin. Meta One coin cannot go below the asset valuation. So what we're seeing is the coin lifted above the asset backing and is in a, a higher market value right now, which is around 107 to 108. It's been pretty consistent there for about a week or two. So it's doing very well. It's very consistent. It's very stable. Um, you know, we're watching other coins that we all know and love move very drastically throughout the day, which it's, it's hard to watch if, if you're, <laughs> unless you're a seasoned trader. Um, but anyway, we're very stable. Uh, we've gone up a little bit, you know, one or 2%. A lot of the market has devalued 20%. So um, we're really watching our financial architecture in performance of the true market. And it's very exciting to watch. And so it's doing very well. Very good. Very good. And I really wanted to talk about metanomics, the entire complete financial ecosystem, but also take a look at it as a way of a new way of thinking by it actually makes the old system obsolete. You're building a new system. And I also wanted to talk about the, um, how the fictional world has no jurisdiction on the, um, the, the living, breathing humans and how living, breathing humans interact and trade on Meta One versus legal fictions and, mm -hmm. and really leading into the process of how that happens. Well, Metanomics is a, is, a, is, a, is a name that we've given the entire platform. Um, the entire platform starts with creating non-fictional uh, non -fictional entities into living, breathing humans again. Um, we call that the secured party creditor process, which is facilitated by our legal arm called universal law. So, and, and just step and think about it. We, we have a private platform. So our private platform can't have fictional characters. And so we assist in the procedure of securitizing is, and that's the legal word for moving a fictional character into a living, breathing human. Again, it's called a secured party. We facilitate that paperwork, which is, it's very, you know, it's, it can be considered intensive. Um, we've consolidated it into about a 10 minute uh, procedure. Uh, the signature and notary takes longer than 10 minutes, but the formation of the documents take up to 10 minutes. It's, uh, we do the legal filings for you. It's all automatic in our system. Um, so we bring fiction, fictional characters. We make them sec uh, secured party creditors. Um, that's how we issue wallets. The wallets are issued through our private exchange. Um, so that's a big, a big, big, big sh paradigm shift within our platform. So um, that's one aspect of it. Uh, in Metanomics, we have a private exchange, as we've mentioned, it's a distributed exchange, which means it's peer to peer. There's no centralized authority over our exchange. It's a true market exchange. It's something we probably haven't seen in United States for a long time, probably since the Federal Reserve was enacted in 1913. That's just my opinion. Um, regardless, we have a true market economy working through our distributed exchange, um, which is um, outstanding. And then the third aspect of our platform is banking, in which we facilitate the conversion of fiat to crypto, crypto to fiat. Um, and that will be, that's what we kind of consider the exit aspect of our platform. And so that's been, you know, a little bit involved <laughs> to interact with the public side, right? Because we're private. So the banking side, as you know, with fiat is public. And so we've been mediating this, this process. And I, we're very excited about the outcome uh, of this process. And with the entirety of Metanomics, it allows living, breathing men and women to transfer their money and buy and sell at their will to trade other cryptocurrencies uh, favorably and honorably, which means they actually own their coins and they actually own themselves for the first time. So we've done a lot of firsts and I, I know this is a lot for this interview. I've been talking with people for a couple of years and they call me back and like, Oh, I, I just now understand finally what you've been talking about for two years. So I know this is like a big index for some people. 
Um, and then our, our coins are based on something that's, that's new. Our, our financial architecture is based on appreciation, not debt. So as you may know, most instruments, Federal Reserve notes or U.S. dollars, um, the plethora of other instruments, standby letters of credit, um, <laughs> promissory notes, there's, there's tons of different types of instruments. They're all considered debt instruments. So in our world, our new platform of metanomics, we don't believe that people should operate in, in debt. Debt is not the appropriate disposition for appreciation or abundance. So we architect our financial instruments, our financial architectures are based on appreciation and abundance. So it's, it's, it's a completely different mindset. And I know, you know, for some listeners, you know, it sounds a little, you know, like I might have a, I might be a hippie and I might have, you know, some funny shoes on walking around, you know, eating granola somewhere, but actually we're very proficient and seasoned business people that are experts and energy and understand abundance very well. And so our architecture isn't just on, you know, I call the fictional character slaves and I'm sorry if that offends people, but it's just, it has to be kind of a harsh reality for people to realize who they are until they're secured. Um, you know, the slaves are, are securities for the federal reserve notes, uh, which means, you know, slaves are the, uh, backing of the Federal Reserve notes. It's it's a, it's an energy that, that, that to me no longer appeals to a, a large market set. And so we are creating living, breathing humans, and we're creating assets that are appreciative, not debt instruments. And so that is also the major mantra of metanomics and our platforms. So it's uh, you know it's it's completely different and. You know, people that say, well, you're, you're opposing the Federal Reserve and the central banking platform. And I'm like, no, actually, we're not opposing them. I think they're great the way they are. I just think it doesn't fit my business or my, uh, my, my, my energy. I don't, it doesn't make sense to me anymore. I would never want to trade debt slave currencies and a very um, unscrupulous system. It doesn't fit me anymore. And, and the entirety of what we're creating is just an alternative. And, and it's not opposing, we're not you know, uh, opposing. We, we actually have no effort or have no care in the world about the central banks or the Federal Reserve or the US Treasury or our good friend Stephen Munition or whoever those people are. We think they're great and they're perfect where they are. So that's a little bit about metanomics. I hope that wasn't too long. No, not at all. It's it's absolutely perfect, and it's it's nice to know that someone like yourself and the, your team is creating a system that can operate alongside and give people a choice whether they want to be free or whether they want to continue. And it is difficult to hear uh, um, for an individual if they've never heard the term of debt slave or slave and have it be referred to them. Um, that's something that nobody wants to think about. And I have one other question. How is the coin holder protected? How does Meta One integrate your coin holder into your private jurisdiction? Well, presently, uh, we have enforcement is what you're, you're stating is how do we enforce this private jurisdiction and how does that enforcement cover the coin holders in this, you know, alternative model? Um, we have a very aggressive legal team. We are establishing precedents uh, in, in superior jurisdictions regarding our right to transact freely. Um, we filed so many cases. I we have a, we we started a whole legal uh, a whole legal trust to facilitate all the activities and general administrative expenses. So with that said, our precedents uh, in these higher jurisdictions, they roll down to all the lower jurisdictions and we're enforcing them with everything we have. And every coin holder is, a, you know, they're, they're covered in that protection. Every coin holder, when they come in and facilitate the secured party creditor process, 
um, they're, they're part of our team, you know, um, our, our, our legal modalities and extensive legal, uh, activities is, is for everyone. Uh, they're, they're covered. They're completely covered. Not just our coin holders, quite honestly, but the entire cryptocurrency industry at large. Um, you know, I, I get people calling me, they're like, uh, the CEO of this other coin just got arrested, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, whatever. Um, what, is, what is your opinion? And I'm, I'm like, I'm sorry. He, he got persecuted, and he's a, you know, a prisoner at war. You know, um, in my opinion. Um, but I don't know every CEO that's been arrested for cryptocurrency. I don't know the foundation of it, obviously. But we have to understand this is what we're doing is for the entire industry. Um, it's, it is definitely for Meta One, um, but the precedence is for the entire cryptocurrency industry, and so. Um, we're very <laughs> aggressive. Uh, we've spent more money on legal than most people spent on <laughs> anything, everything included. So we're very aggressive. We're very well financed and we're very tenacious. So that's fantastic. And w whenever you do a launch, w w will your metanomic system, your meta one coin, w w will you be global? Absolutely. The entirety of our whole uh, offering is a global offering. We have large holders in most continents in our private offering. Um, uh, everything we consider is international. Uh, to me, there is no border, there is no boundary. And, and so it's completely international. <laughs> Very, very fun stuff. And this conversation could take so many directions and could, could go into so many depths. I'm so glad you came on to the show today and talk about Matawan and your perspective and all of the things that we discussed, Robert. Thank you. Thank you, Lane, for having me. And um, I'm, I'm a fan of your work and you're looking great. Thank you for all your editorial. It's amazing, amazing work. So thank you for your work. You're welcome. And until next time, thank you. Thank you.